February 19, 2024, and I'm starting on the center fuselage, which begins with this main spar and spar carry through. So I've got the main spar put together, and here's the thing that I came up with, or I ran up against here was I'm working on this autopilot bracket. So the instructions say, hold on one second. Okay, that's better. So the instructions will tell you to take this, this angle and this is going to go here. And then there are these, these M4 by 16 millimeter screws that go up through the bottom. And with that, you're supposed to somehow fish this nylon, uh, this nylock into here and make that work. Well, I'm not gonna sit here all day and play that game. So I made this uh, piece of aluminum with these M4 nut plates on the back, slide it in. Get my screw, put my screw in up underneath here. And use this wrench. Let's see, my fingers are in the way to hold this in place and then start threading this in. First one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. But that's it. So start threading that in and then do the rest just like that. This is the center fuselage uh, with the ribs being installed. Um, here is the rear spar. This is the undercarriage uh, channel. And then this is the main front spar carry through. Um, what's interesting is this handle here is th these bolts are removed, but the handle is there to preserve the spacing so that when the wing spar itself enters there, that spacing has, is maintained and it doesn't expand or contract and give it any problems. So that will stay there until the wings are installed. And there's some brackets in here for like, uh, well, autopilot, servos, and things like that. Um, these pieces up here at the top are just simply jigs to maintain the spacing between these two uprights. Same thing here. This is just a jig to keep that spacing between these two uprights together. Um, and then what's gonna happen next is we're gonna join the fuselage, the rear fuselage to the center. The reason this is up on its side, the, the, the rear fuselage is up on its side, is I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of before joining these, I wanted to go ahead and fill all these rivets. So I'm not having to worry about that later. So um, taking a little extra time to do that. So that way I don't have to do it on my back. So that'll dry tomorrow and I'll just sand that and then I'll, I, will, I will write the rear fuselage back to its original position. And we're gonna start joining the main, or excuse me, the center and the rear fuselage together. Before I join the center fuselage with the rear fuselage, I'm gonna start on this bottom floor, which consists of these ribs and then the insulation that goes between the ribs. And then finally, there's this, uh, this floor skin that goes and. You're basically sandwiching these, this all together so um, this all becomes one integrated piece creating quite a bit of you know stability and structural support for the bottom portion of the uh, of the airplane so um, insulations on both sides and one thing I've done here is uh, this is a fire retardant insulation and it's a one-eighth of an inch I find it, it's more uh, effective if I double this one eighth inch insulation compared to just using quarter inch, quarter inch insulation. 
So I've got two layers of 1 8 inch insulation on the bottom, one on top of the other. And then I've got the foam. This is, this is closed cell and this is open cell. This open cell comes from the kit and I bought this closed cell eighth inch insulation. Like I said, I just doubled it up, creating a much more uh, sound proof uh, property, I guess. And then I'll go ahead and put this uh, skin on here and we'll, we'll begin adding components to this, which will essentially be the floor. This will be the rudder area, bottom skin, bottom of the floor of the cockpit. I have the fuselage on its side and I'm going to show how I've installed these bottom skins, especially the anti-corrosion that goes into the rivets that attach to the bottom of the carry through spar. So you've got a stainless steel rivet being attached to aluminum. And so there needs to be some anti-corrosion to prevent galvanic corrosion. And that's these rivets right through here. And you can see there's a little bit of a purple juice coming out and that is from this uh, this ACF 50 and I've just squirted it into a cup and I just take the rivet and I dip it into the anti-corrosion and then when I put it in here go ahead and set the rivet and now hopefully the rivet is entirely encapsulated with that anti-corrosion and there shouldn't be any issues. So I've got this bottom skin here, which is the forward fuselage. This is the channel for the undercarriage. This is the bottom skin of the center fuselage. And uh, I'm gonna start installing these control, uh, control stops right through here, now that I've got this. So the first thing I wanted to do when I put this skin on was attach to the most significant structural aspect which is that carry through spar. Then I can go ahead and start riveting other areas. So this is what it's gonna look like, uh, the control stop installation, uh, which will be on the other side. And then, of course, I, I, you know, these rivets are gonna go through the bottom end, so I have to keep it on the side. And then I will go through and start, um, as I've already done here, I will go ahead and fill those rivet heads uh, where I need to do, like on here and on, those stainless steel, I still have more of those to fill and uh, get those sanded down. And then I'll be able to put this entire structural piece on its uh, right side with the bottom facing down. Here are the, this is the uh, control bracket stop that's installed in that bay. There's another bracket installed here. And those are all riveted from the underside and then for the other uh, control stick there's the bracket for that so I did go ahead and you can see these rivets I did fill those rivets and sanded them all down I did that for the entire bottom and I had some left over in my syringe so I went ahead and did the left, or excuse me, the right side of this uh, rear fuselage. So um, I still need to do the other side of the rear fuselage, but anytime I'm doing rivet filling, I'm just kind of taking it on over to any place else that I need to complete uh, the rivet filling. And still, I've done the bottom of the wings, as you've seen in the previous video. I will do the top of the wings at some point in the future too. And just FYI, I'm still waiting for the replacement uh, fuel tank skin, the skin up here at the top, um, that's for the right fuel tank, was damaged in transit, so I wasn't uh, able to use that. I had to request another skin. So the left skin is here and the left tank has been built. Uh, it just needs to be sealed. So sealing involves the insulation of the skin and the ribs and all of that so once I get the once I get the skin for the right tank I'll I'll seal both of those tanks and then they will be installed on the leading edge of both of these wings a couple things here with the uh, center fuselage with control basically the controls 
these are the rudder, rudder pedals. They've been installed and operate very smoothly. These, uh, these grommets make this, make this operation really super smooth. So there's no need for lubrication. They're just they're practically, you know, they just fall on their own weight. So that makes it nice. No binding there. Uh, the next thing is the elevator and flap torque tubes. And unfortunately, the flap torque tube, which runs along here, is on back order. So I don't have it and I won't be able to install it. But the elevator torque tube is in place at the bottom. And this actually took quite a bit of uh, manipulating to get this to be a smooth operation. All of these channels have U's in the bottom of them and they needed to be smoothed out so that they, uh, so the grommets and the bushings and everything line up perfectly. You guys see right there how that, that's the grommet with the tube running through it there. So you gotta smooth those out a little bit and I use this um, spindle sander to do that just do a little tiny bit at a time, put it back on um, until finally it gets really super smooth. And then the last part of the control uh, controls is the elevator torque tube here and same situation. You gotta take these off, run them through the spindle sander just very slightly on the inside radius here um, and then put it back together until it gets a good connection. And this one I could go ahead and finish riveting. So these are all riveted in place. So this connection is now permanent. Whereas the uh, elevator and aileron torque tubes, or excuse me, the flap and the um, aileron torque tubes, uh, they're still clecoed in place. And it, it's advised to really not even rivet those in place until the side skins and everything's on so that if there's any movement at all, you don't want those to be bound. You might have to take those back apart and fine tune them. So I'm gonna wrap this video up and I did say at one point earlier in the video, we would do the connection to the center and the rear fuselage, but I think I'm just gonna wrap this up and I'll open up the next video with that connection happening between the rear and the um, center fuselage. So. See you next time.